see my new team chairman set out uh, in that sort of section uh, three uh, <coughs> to see the um, I'm not sure as a director of the but for the world. Um, so there's a number of initiatives and, and the books, you know, some of these have already been um, uh, uh, discussed uh, within the um, within the meeting already. Um, but obviously you'll know that the co-commissioning for um, primary care um, is, is one of those initiatives. And I suppose one, one of the things probably that has already been talked about is that there's a number of things that's going on uh, all at the same time, co-commissioning with one PCF. <coughs> and I think, uh, you know, because there's an end of this sort of, um, and that's the case we made for a sort of initiative I don't know if that's a medical disease or not, but um, but um, I think what we have to think about is that uh, it's happening for, for the first of all's purpose. It's, it's to think about the strategic aims that you're uh, working towards, obviously, you just talked about it in terms of your career review, and then how you use those initiatives as tools in order to achieve those strategic aims. And I think that discussion earlier on is very well sort of approach towards that. Um, so, in terms of co commissioning, um, we're always on this. Greater involvement in this category of that. We do within Cheshire Motors have had four uh, CCGs that have gone through the delegated uh, status for co commissioning, and I'm sure that obviously we'll be in contact with those and be learning from, from what they're doing as well as obviously working closely with the area team um, in, 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 in sort of commissioning uh, primary care services. Um, primary care challenge fund is another one of these in, in initiatives uh, in terms of the second wave. Um, of, 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 uh, of access pilots. Um, the, the, um, the, 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 the last paragraph of the message we're, we're expecting an announcement. Uh, I think <coughs> West Cheshire, South Cheshire, Bell Road, Holton, no two successful ones in that. But I think, you know, I would expect that there's lots of learning to be had from that, uh, from, from, from that world. And then we move on to, I think, as, as obviously you can probably. Uh, discuss the vanguard uh, sites and, and, and you know, the fact that we have been successful in, in the vanguard pilot. I think that's extremely well prepared, I have to say. You know, as I said, we're a little bit of the time, but you know, certainly that's where I would put it in a sentence. Yeah, and, and I think the fact that we've already had that vision 2018 going, it was, I think that was the you know, vanguard was, was then the tool that you could use to, to speed up the implementation. So I think it's, it's a very welcome uh, a, a, a approach on that. And certainly from a sort of a regional team uh, perspective, obviously you know, we would be delighted to sort of help to support you of um, all, all, all that and kind of working with you uh, on, on, on sort of further development on that.
positive growth and not by transition. Uh, I'm pleased to say that in terms of how positive growth, uh, the Merseyside and Chelsea ones will achieve this trajectory um, uh, in respect of access. So that's good news in terms of how we need the number of health visitors that we should have uh, for the area and obviously for the uh, local authorities to take on uh, commissioning responsibility for October 2015. So those are our
each of these slides, um, we're going to sort of go through, we'll give you an overview of sort of what they mean, and we'll just sort of focus on the exceptions which are actually the reds. Um, just for last year, what we actually achieved compared with last year, we reduced the reds from 9 to 6, we reduced the ambers from 12 to 9, and we increased the greens from 5 to 3. <coughs> Okay, this is, this is a sub-issue, if you like. These are all the indicators that we looked at. And you can see here sort of what we actually sort of started with, with 12, 13, and what we, what we actually achieved with 13, 14. This sort of, the findings here, um, we were sort of looking at managing long-term conditions, some of the examples, national cancer screening programs, and making sure that screening takes place for the general population compared with the learning disability population. And the exception here was A6, um, primary care communication of learning disabilities. In a, in a nutshell, that was what we're trying to do there is sort of um, enable or make sure we ensure that reasonable adjustments are in place for patients with learning disabilities that move from sort of primary care to secondary care. Um, and again, what we've done here was sort of looking at sort of um, installing or connecting the template within primary care that can electronically be shared within secondary care as well. Good on that no. <laughs> Can I just tell the dark ones are red, okay? The, the lighter ones are the others, and the, what look like yellow to you is probably the green. Okay. <laughs> Does that help? Because <laughs> I can see a few people going, oh, okay. okay, section B looks at staying healthy, okay? Um, that looks at areas such as reviewing packages of care. It looks at contract compliance and safeguarding as well. So there's some of the areas that we look at. As you can see from the dark patches, <laughs> we've actually improved on four areas from last year to this year. So we've actually, it might help if we've gone, B3 has gone from a red to a green. B4 has gone from an amber to a green. B6 has gone from an amber to a <coughs> oh, from B5 from a red to an amber, and B9 from an amber to a green. Okay, so we've we've improved on those areas, and that that helps around the evidence that we collect and, and the way that we respond to things. What we want to concentrate on is, is the red areas, so the darker areas. So what we're going to look at is. The B1, which is around review of packages of care. We got a red last year, we got a red this year. In order to get a green, we need to do 100% reviews on people with learning disabilities. And what we do is we take a number of areas where we do those reviews. So one area might be doing really well in review, and another area might be doing quite badly. So it averages out, which is why we've got a red. So we want to aim to get a green, but we, we at least want to get rid of that red. The contract, contract compliance section, B, B2, we actually got 87% on contract compliance, making sure that we're actually monitoring our contracts. To get an amber, we need 90%. So we missed out by 3%, but we're working towards that. But once again, that's another area that we we want to aim for a green. Okay. What we're doing with those two areas is we are actually working with our other colleagues, so we're working with our uh, contracts and quality assurance teams, and we're actually working with our partner agencies to see how we collate that evidence and get all the reviews and the contract compliance um, evidence that we need in order to, to get greens for them. If you look, right, okay, if you look at B6, which isn't very good on yours, that actually shows as a white for last year, okay? And that is around um, compassion, dignity, and respect. And the reason it was white last year is because it's a new indicator this year, which is why we've, we've got a red for that. And that's basically because, with it being a new indicator, we haven't actually been collecting that evidence. So now we know that that indicator is going to be in there from now on, 
we're actually looking at how do we collect that evidence, how do we work with our partner agencies to make sure that we don't get a red next year. Section C is looking at uh, living well. If you take C1 to C7, um, we've actually maintained a lot of um, our indicator rag rating. The ones that we haven't is, is C2. We actually improved on that, so we went from an amber to a green. C5, we actually went from an amber to a red. And that's not because the, the work isn't being done out there. People are being supported into employment. It's just that we're not capturing that. So we've got work in, in the teaching hospital around the, um, the internship, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which we're not actually capturing. So that's actually showing people the basic <coughs> um, things that they need for employment, but we're not capturing that. So, we need to work more closely with our partner agencies and how we capture that information. <coughs> C8 is care of satisfaction. We got away from that last year because once again that's another new indicator. So this year we got a red. So what we're going to be doing is we know that, that information is being collated out there, it's just that we don't collate it all together. So there'll be different organisations that are actually collating that information, but we're not collating it in one area so we're not get, getting that, that evidence that we need. So we're going to be looking how, at how we do that in the future, how we record that information and how we get, how we collate it and what kind of information we need. Okay? okay. So I think we can safely say that we have made huge numbers and differences this year. We've still got a long way to go. Uh, but we have been commended by NHS England in our partnership work. Um, and I think that's very evident from ourselves, Paul and I, and Anna Marie and Jane have worked very closely with the last year and it's paying dividends. Um, <coughs> in terms of the submission, um, we were told much improved submission this year and I know we just talked about evidence and collecting that evidence. But it's down to people like Paul and Anna Marie this year that's actually made the, the ratings a lot better because they have dug and dug and persevered organisations to get the information we need in order to represent the good work that's going on out there. Sheena, I just want to pick out, she was going to pick out CWP. We've been extremely well supported by CWP and LD facilitator Linda Swan. She's made excellent strides in getting into general practice this year, which is a service that they support GPs with in order to make reasonable adjustments for people with LD and instead of only being able to get into I don't know, a handful of GP practices last year, she's now into the 36. Um, and that is down to Linda herself as well. Um, and I think just a quick mention on a project we're doing is Gertrude Court, which is a bit of a redesign in terms of our existing LD services, whether with authority colleagues and um, CWP. And that's looking at having a, an integrated health and social and having more of a wraparound service for people with LD. Um, and I think it's fair to say that uh, you know, we're, we're not quite there yet with virtual court, but if you look at the report that just came out recently from the Learning Disability Senate, they very much support this way of working. <coughs> so we've mentioned some of the examples of good practice, but I think it's, it's instead of you know, just keep patting ourselves on the back and how well we're, we're doing, in terms of our progress, we need to keep our eye on the ball, we need to keep the greens green, we need to get the ambers on the screen, and I think our ultimate goal is not to have any beds at all. I think, although we've spoken about our good working relationship with our local authority colleagues, I think we need to continue that, spread the net a bit wider, um, but at the same time, we've got to work at pace. Um, and finally, uh, this is our action plan for this financial year, um, self-explanatory down the side I suppose in a nutshell, to sort of summarise that, what, what we want to do is continue to be proactive. We want to develop an action plan, uh, a written action plan that we can actually share with our groups. 
We don't want to be complacent. It's, it's, it's all about the indicators. It's not about the reds, it's not about the greens, it's about the answers, it's about all of them. We want to continue the joint working. We want to share best practice locally, regionally, and nationally. And we want to work closely with the JSNA. Continue to develop and strengthen the LD staff group that we're actually part of and improve on last year. And I suppose finally, it's, it's to improve the health and well-being of patients with learning disabilities. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much.